जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे गोपी जाना वाला गिरिवर तारे गोपी जाना वाला गिरिवर तारे यशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन चे यमुना तेर वन चे जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारे All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This morning we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, chapter 17. Maharaj Prithi becomes angry at the earth. We're on text <coughs> 34. Saiva Bhavan Atma Vanir Mitam Jagad. Putendriyanta kananatma kam vibo Samstapa yishyan ajamam rasatalan Abhyuja haram basa adi sukkaraha Savai bhavan atma vanir mitam jagad Bhutendriyanta karanatma kam vibo Samstapa yishyan ajamam rasatalad 
कब्यूजहारंबस आरिशु सुकर सफाई भवान आत्मा विनिर्मित हम जगत पुत्रियां था कर नात्मकं विभो समस्तापयिष्यं अजमाम सातलान अभ्युचह हाराम बस आदिश सुकर हो So, huh? He. Why? Certainly. Bhavan, yourself. Atma, by yourself. Vinirmitam, manufactured. Chagat, this world. Puta, the physical elements. Indriya, senses. Antakarna, mind. Heart, Atmakam, consisting of Vibo, O Lord, Samstapayishyan, maintaining, Aja, O unborn, Mam, me, Rasat, Tulat, from the Plutonic region, Abhujahara, 
took out um, basaha from the water adi original sukaraha the boar translation my dear lord you are always unborn once in the form of the original boar you rescued me from the waters and the bottom of the universe through your own energy you created all the physical elements the senses and the heart for the maintenance of the world purport this refers to the time when Lord Krishna appeared as the supreme boar Varaha and rescued the earth which had been merged in water the Sura Hiranyaksha had dis dislocated the earth from its orbit and thrown it beneath the waters of the Garbhadaka Ocean. Then the Lord, in the shape of the original boar, rescued the earth. So I'll just read a couple more verses. My dear Lord, in this way you once protected me by rescuing me from the water, and consequently your name has been famous as Dara Dara, he who holds the planet earth. Yet at the present moment, in the form of a great hero, you're about to kill me with sharpened arrows. I am, however, just like a boat on the water, keeping everything afloat. Purport. The Lord is known as Dada Dada, meaning he who keeps the planet Earth on his tusk as the boar incarnation. Thus the planet Earth it, in the shape of a cow is accounting the contradic contradictory acts of the Lord. Although he, c he once saved the Earth, he now wants to upset the Earth, which is like a boat on water. No one can understand the activities of the Lord. Due to a poor fund of knowledge, human beings sometimes think the Lord's activity is contradictory. All right, one last verse. My dear Lord, I am also the creation of one of your energies, composed of the three modes of material nature. Consequently, I am bewildered by your activities. Even the activities of your devotees cannot be understood and what to speak of your pastimes. Thus everything appears to us to be contradictory and wonderful. Purport. The activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his various forms and incarnations are always uncommon and wonderful. It is not possible for, any, for a tiny human being to estimate the purpose and plans of such activities. Therefore, Sri the Jiva Goswami has said that unless the Lord's activities are expected, excuse me, are accepted as inconceivable, they cannot be explained. The Lord is eternally existing as Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead in Goloka Vrindavan. He has also simultaneously expanded himself in innumerable forms, beginning with Lord Ram, Lord Nursingha, Lord Varaha, and all the incarnations coming directly from Sankarshan. Sankarshan is the expansion of Baladev, and Baladev is the first manifestation of Krishna. Therefore, all these incarnations are known as Kala. The word Ishvaranam refers to all the personalities of Godhead, as stated in the Brahma Samhita 539, Rama, In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is confirmed that all the incarnations are partial expansions, or Kala, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. One should not take the plural number of the word Ishvaranam to mean that there are many godheads. The fact is that God is one, but he exists eternally and expands himself in numerable forms and acts in various ways. Sometimes the common man is bewildered by all this and considers such activities contradictory. But they are not contradictory. There is a great plan behind all, that, all the Lord's activities. For our understanding, it is sometimes said that the Lord is situated in the heart of the thief, as well as in the heart of the householder. But the super soul in the heart of the thief dictates, go and steal things from that particular house. And at the same time, the Lord tells the householder, now be careful of thieves and burglars. These instructions to different persons appear contradictory, yet we should know that the super soul, the supreme personality of God, had has some plan, and we should not not consider such activities contradictory. The best course is to surrender into the Supreme Personality of Godhead wholeheartedly and, being protected by Him, remain peaceful. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the fourth canto, 17th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Maharaj Prithu Becomes Angry at the Earth. Om 
Ganeti Vedandasya Kananjana Shavaka Yo Chakshu Lan Meditam Mena Tasmashi Gurave Namaha Ukam Karitavacha Lampangam Nangay Tekidim Yakripata Maham Vandeshi Gurun Dinitarinam Vanchak of the Divisha Kripas and Du Bevicha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavi Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pravunita Nanda Shri Vaiti Gadadha Shivasri Gauru Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> so, in different, uh, different, um, you know, every body, every, every, every body that a soul takes. Uh, they get accustomed, they get uh, used to that particular body. They become, you could say, comfortable with it, or they even may like it, or whatever. Um, whether it's a dog body, or hog body, or this body, or that body, human body, demigod body, so it becomes attached. And they get used to their particular environment in which they live in. So, I remember uh, there's this devotee, he... Uh, I've, he actually joined the Brahmacharya Ashram years ago. He's not here anymore, but he was here for a few years. So we went up to, I went up to his house with him, <laughs> and we were, we were going to collect his stuff because he was moving into the ashram here. And uh, he lived right over a freeway, right under a freeway in L.A. And it wasn't just one freeway. It was just, you know, how they, different uh, free, uh right under it, and th that was his apartment. I was, just, I was thinking, oh, how does he live there? This is just ridiculous, this is just horrible. You know, all that noise, 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 noise. I was just thinking about these guys, you know, <laughs> how we're gonna deal with this, but, but yeah, people come conditioned. They live in New York City, they hear all the traffic and this and that, and then sometimes they go to a quiet place and they can't go to sleep, you know. Oh, I have a hard time going to sleep. Where's all the noise? get a soundtrack with the New York City uh, traffic. Um, or, so. But, whatever the case. So, yeah, Krishna, he takes different forms uh, for different purposes. And here we just read the last few verses of the chapter. And it describes Krishna taking the form of a boar, a transcendental boar, spiritual uh, form that Krishna has. So Krishna could take any form he wants, and that's exactly what he does. Um, some people they say, "Oh, well, how can how can God accept a form like that?" We could say, "Okay, well, why why can't he? He could do whatever he wants." And it's not that he just does it just for fun. I mean, you could say Krishna does things for fun, you could say, or for his pleasure, pleasure pastimes, or the pleasure of his devotees. But he, there's a reason, uh, that, you know, the earth, it uh, fell from orbit and into the Garbhadukkha, right? And then, and then, and then Krishna came in the form of a boar and with his <laughs> snout, his transcendental snout, he you know, lifted the lifted earth and, you know, brought it back up into orbit. Because Hiran Yaksha, anybody remember besides Chavita Prabhu? Because you know, we know, he knows. But Hiran Yaksha, what does that mean? Does anyone remember? Yeah, always searching for gold. Hiran Yaksha, always looking for gold. That was Hiran Yaksha. And his brother, and not his brother. His brother, Hiran Yaksha Yeah. They're both into gold. Um... So Hiranyaksha, always looking for gold, so said that he did so much gold mining that somehow or other the planet Earth fell into uh, Garbhadukkha because of that. Anyway, so uh, Varaha came, he lifted it up. And we have, uh, we have he, um, Narsingadev, and there's so many forms, but you could say, oh, well, he could have come as Krishna and lifted up that, right? Okay, fine, he could have, but... He wanted to come as uh, Lord Bohr, transcendental Bohr. So he could do what he wants. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Oh, that's funny. The supreme personality of Hoghead. Pretty interesting. Never heard that one before. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so Javeda Prabhu said that there's that story which, which Prabhupada, as far, I mean, Prabhupada probably said it in his conversations and morning walks, I'm sure he repeated it in his classes, but as f I, I just remember it being in one purport in the Bhagavatam, in the third canto, which Prabhupada gives a brief description of that story, and he says that Indra, because of some, some offense he made, he was, he was uh, cursed to come in the form, to appear in this world in the form of a hog. And Indra, I mean, the, the amount of opulence he had, the amount of enjoyment, the amount of power, position, I mean, he was the, he was, he's like the top of the, he's, he's, he's the king. It says he's the king of heaven. He's the, you know. So, and then he had to descend, <laughs> avatar, he had to descend into the form of a hog. So, I mean, this is from the highest position practically to the lowest. And interesting enough is that somehow or other he became quite accustomed to that body that he was inhabiting. And he actually started to like it. And whatever, he had his hog <laughs> wife, and he had his hoglets or piglets, his little cute children, right? The pig children. And, I mean, to him, yeah, they looked cute, I mean. So he became very attached. And Lord Brahma, he came, and he, he came to tell Indra, okay, you know, it's time for you to leave this body, and, you know, time for you to go to back to heaven, and, you know, resume your, your uh, position of responsibility, because there's some responsibility there, too. Um, so then Indra said, oh, well, how can I do that? said, this is just so great, you know. And as Javita Prabhu said, I'm in hog heaven, you know. I can't. Like when we were in Vrindavan, Tirtamaj and a few other, we were walking around Govardhan and there was this uh, big hog. He was like really big, huge. <laughs> and he was just there and anyways, I don't know what he was in, some type of muck of something. God knows what, it, what you know. But he, it was very hot. It was a hot day. So he was just there, you know, relaxing. He said he's in hog heaven. So yeah, I come accustomed to the body. So of course now, Vraha Dev, it, he's transcendental. It's not that oh he become he he takes Krishna takes the form of a hog, and he becomes like you know some hog mentality or something. No, that doesn't happen at all. He remains transcendental, uh, Krishna. So that's the difference also between a soul taking the hog body and Krishna taking the hog body. Is that soul becomes affected by it. In, in, um, So, yes, the inconceivable nature of Krishna is uh, inconceivable. Um, and in, in many ways, uh, somebody, people who want to try to understand Krishna, to, to be Krishna conscious, they have to accept that. There are certain things that, that uh, yeah, they just have to accept if they want to make progress. <coughs> and that's one of them that it's not that we will be able to understand everything about Krishna. And, uh, and why should we? I mean, to, to even understand the, the, in, the, the nature of this world or the nature of the human body and the nature of anything really. I mean, it's hard to really understand so many things. What to speak of Krishna, the person behind all of it. So... Um, we should be humble and just accept that. <laughs> and in relation to um, the plans, plans of Krishna, so there's, Prabhupada said, it's quoted in The Servant of the Servant, a book by uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami, how he came to Krishna consciousness and uh, some of his story and Prabhupada's, um, Prabhupada pastimes as well. So in that book he says that, quoting Prabhupada, that he said that, um, Prabhupada said, you have your plan, I have my plan, and Krishna has his plan. So the, so the goal is to, or the goal is to figure out what is Krishna's plan and act. 
in accordance with that. So um, the condition, the soul's plan, the different uh, living entities and their plans in this world, they are of, you could say, different details and different, um, yeah, different plans. But the underlying principle or the underlying motive behind all of it is just personal enjoyment, personal sense gratification or uh, enjoyment that has nothing to do with Krishna. So, um, so there's, ver there's various plans in, re in relation to that. Now, Krishna's plan is that we surrender to him out of love, out of affection, out of devotional, in, in devotional service. And, of course, depending on each, uh, in each, each individual, that surrender uh, takes different, uh, it looks differently. How I surrender will be different than how somebody else surrenders, in the sense that there's different social uh, responsibilities, social positions, on and on and on like that. So someone may surrender to Krishna in relation to being a fired up, enthusiastic book distributor, like Brigapati Prabhu, <laughs> uh, our uh, good old Brigapati Prabhu in LA. He's been distributing books for, I don't know, what, over 40 years? Over 40 years. He's been, and he's still going out. He's just still, still traveling with the young brahmacharis, too. He hops in the van, travels with the brahmacharis. Yeah, they can't, they can't keep up. He, yeah, he's got a lot of energy. He's, he's enthusiastic. Um, so that's how he surrendered to Krishna. Of course, there's the basic idea of surrender to Krishna, I mean, being Krishna conscious, thinking of Krishna, and manmana bhava man bhakto madhyaji mam namaskru, bowing down to Krishna, thinking about Krishna, offering everything to Krishna. But the way in which one does that may be different, like Brigapati Prabhu, or some devotees, they surrender to the altar, <laughs> surrender to the deities, pujari service, and on and on and on like that. They surrender as grihastas, they surrender as uh, vanaprastas, they surrender as sannyasis, world preachers. So whatever the case is, the idea is one should surrender. And that doesn't mean that one loses their individuality. They actually realize their individuality. And that doesn't mean they lose, lose their personality. It means they actually realize their personality, who they are. In other words, the more Krishna conscious we become, the more our real personality comes out which a real personality is doesn't have anything to do with the you know in many ways the body or the present mind or the modes of nature or whatever's going on like that so um so in other words we shouldn't have anything to fear oh i'll lose my individuality i'll lose my personality i'll lose my freedom i'll lose my i'll lose this i'll lose that i'll be a loser um, we shouldn't think like that. Actually, we win everything. We, g we get everything w that the soul needs and that, that we need. <coughs> um, and we should have faith that Krishna uh, can engage us in a way that is actually beneficial and that is worthwhile and that is uh, inspiring and that will make us happy. We should have faith in that. And we should also have faith that devotees will do the same. That they will engage us, they will inspire us, they will, they will um, help us, encourage us in such a way that we will be happy and satisfied and, and good to go. Good to go back to Godhead. Or else, what's the use of us accepting a guru? I mean, we shouldn't have accepted a guru then if we don't want to take any advice or suggestions or whatever we shouldn't so in other words to think to for one to think oh well hey i know what's good for me okay fine i'm not saying that you know people are like complete not complete i'm not saying that people are completely out of it you know out of touch of reality to the degree that they don't know anything that's good for them and and most disciples of gurus, they're not like that. They know something, and you know they know what's good for them in general. But to think that one knows absolutely what's good for them, 
then what would be the point of accepting a guru? <laughs> so a guru means we know what's good for us, you know? Like I could say, yeah, I know what's good for me to some degree. And everybody could say that in this room, but still we have a guru to guide us because we don't know what absolutely is good for us. And as Sri the Prabhupada says in a purport in the Bhagavatam, he says that Krishna gives the spiritual master unlimited intelligence to help his disciple. Amazing. Unlimited intelligence. That's a lot of intelligence. Unlimited intelligence. Um, so, so yeah, we should have faith that Krishna has a plan and also devotees have a plan. And then Krishna and the devotees are not here just to, you know, uh, make us <laughs> undergo all these austerities and difficulties and challenges and, you know, chastisements and corrections just for the, just for fun or something. But there's actually purpose behind, there's a plan. So in relation to that, there is a wonderful, um, wonderful account in this most wonderful book, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And this is Antilila, Volume 1, Chapter 4. Should we tell them to maybe talk a little quieter? Yeah, maybe. They could, con they could, they could, they could continue working, but maybe they could just talk a little quieter. Be nice about it, don't, you know, don't. So this is uh, this is from yeah Antilila chapter four. Sanatan Goswami visits the Lord. So I'll just read a few um, verses from here, and this will give us an an idea in relation to. Uh, it's very interesting. You'll see. So Sanatan Goswami he wanted to commit suicide. Um, And it'll explain why. Because of bad water in Jari Kunda, so Sanatana Goswami is going to see Lord Chaitanya. So he's traveling through the Jari Kunda forest. Because of bad water in Jari Kunda forest, and because of fasting, Sanatana Goswami contracted a disease that made his body itch. Thus he was afflicted with itching sores from which fluid oozed. In disappointment, Sanatana Goswami considered, I am a I am and I am of a low caste, and my body is useless for devotional service. When I go to Puri, I shall not be able to see Lord Jagannath, nor shall I, shall I always be able to see Lord Chaitanya. I have heard that the residential quarters of Lord Chaitanya are near the temple of Jagannath, but I shall not have the power to go near the temple. The servants of Lord Jagannath generally move about tending to their duties, but if they touch me, I shall be an offender. Because... If you touch, if you're, if, you're, if you're contaminated and you're dirty and then you touch somebody, even brush against them, I mean, technically speaking, on a subtle, maybe even on a subtle platform, sometimes on a gross platform, then you're not qualified to go on the altar, so you have to be very clean, you know, to go on the altar. So then he says, therefore, if I sacrifice, so he's saying my body's full of these itching oozes, it's just useless. I mean, I'm just going to contaminate all the pujaris of Lord Jagannath. I don't want to see my. I don't want to go to in front of Lord Chaitanya like this. This is just useless. This body is useless. <laughs> Therefore, if I sacrifice this body in a good place, my unhappiness will mi be mitigated, and I shall attain an exalted destination. During the Rath Yatra festival, when Lord Jagannath comes out of the temple, I shall give up this body under the will of his car. Okay, after seeing Lord Jagannath, I shall give up my body into the will of the car in the presence of Lord Chaitanya. This will be the highest benediction of my life. Having made this resolution, Sanatha Goswami went to Jagannath Puri and he went to Haridas Thakur's place. So Haridas Thakur, um, Haridas Thakur embraced him. And then it says, uh, Lord Chaitanya arrived. And seeing Lord Chaitanya, Haridas Thakur and Sanatana Goswami immediately fell flat like rods to offer obeisances. And then, the, the, then Lord, excuse me, the Lord then lifted Haridas and embraced him. Haridas Thakur said to Lord Chaitanya, "Here is Sanatana Goswami offering his obeisances." Seeing Sanatana Goswami, the Lord was greatly surprised. When Lord Chaitanya came forward to embrace him, Sanatana 
back to Wayne, s- spoke as follows. My Lord. So Lord Chaitanya was going to embrace him, even though he had all these. <laughs> My Lord, please do not touch me. I fall at your lotus feet. I am the lowest of men, having been born of a low caste. Besides that, I, I have infections on my body. Lord Chaitanya, however, embraced Sanatana Goswami by force. Thus, the moisture oozing from the itching sores touched the transcendental body of Lord Chaitanya. Lord, the Lord introduced all the devotees to Sanatana Goswami, who offered his respectful basins in the lotus feet of them all. The Lord and his devotees sat on a raised platform, and below that sat Haridas Thakur and Sanatana Goswami. So then it continues. There's some discussion about Vrindavan and the journey. Okay. All right, so this is Lord Chaitanya speaking to uh, Sanatan Goswami. He says, my dear Sanatan, he sa- um, if, I, if I could attain Krishna by committing suicide, I would certainly give up millions of bodies without a moment's hesitation. You should know that one cannot attain Krishna simply by giving up the body. Krishna is attainable by devotional service. There's no other means for attaining him. Acts such as suicide are influenced by the mode of ignorance. And in ignorance and passion, one cannot understand who Krishna is. So we could see the state of modern uh, or postmodern humanity and that there's so m- much suicide going on. And Prabhupada said this is from the mode of ignorance. So therefore, there's a great need of spreading Krishna consciousness because uh, people need to get out of the mode of ignorance. Unless one discharges devotional service, one cannot awaken one's dormant love for Krishna, and there's no means for attaining him other than awaken the dormant love. After hearing this, Sanatha Goswami was exceedingly astonished. He could understand, my decision to commit suicide has, has been greatly ap- has not been greatly appreciated by Lord Chaitanya. Sanatana Goswami concluded, Lord Chaitanya, who knows everything past, present, and future, has forbidden me to commit suicide. He then fell down, touching the lotus feet of the Lord, and spoke to him as follows. My Lord, your omniscient, merciful, independent, supreme Lord, exactly like an instrument of wood, I dance as you make me do so. I am low-born. Indeed, I am the lowest. I am condemned, for I have all the characteristics of a sinful man. If you keep me alive, what will be the profit? So this is where, this is... Uh, coming to the point of this idea of plans. So Lord Chaitanya said, Your body is my property. You have already surrendered unto me. Therefore, you no longer have any claim to your body. So Lord Chaitanya is saying that you want to commit suicide, but you surrendered to me. So you can't do that. Why should you want to destroy another's property? Can't you consider what is right and wrong? Your body is my principal instrument for executing many necessary functions. By, by your body, I shall carry out many tasks. So Lord Chaitanya is saying that by you, I'm going to empower you to do many things for me. So um, as like an instrument for me. You shall have to ascertain the basic principles of devotee, devotional service, love of Godhead, vision of duties, and vision of characteristics. You also have to explain Krishna's devotional stir- service, establish centers for cultivation of love of Krishna, excavate holy places of pilgrimage, and teach people how to adopt the renounced order. Matur Vrindava is my very dear abode. I want you to do many things there to preach Krishna consciousness. I have to do all this work through your body, but you want to give it up. How can I tolerate this? At that time, Sanatana Goswami said, Lord Chaitanya, I offer my obeisances unto you. No one can understand the deep ideas you plan within your heart. A wooden doll chants and dances according to the directions of a magician, but does not know how he's dancing and singing. Um, my dear Lord, as you cause one to dance, he dances accordingly, but how he dances and who is causing him to dance, he does not know. Um... 
so that's the basic it goes on but that's the basic idea that uh, he's saying that he has many um, I mean who could understand the plans right that's what it said yeah, who could understand the plans of, the deep plans of, uh, yeah, the deep ideas you plan within your heart. So, he's saying that through you I plan to do many things, so don't commit suicide. So, someone would say, okay, well, who am I? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Sanatan Goswami, I'm not, I'm not a Goswami at all. <laughs> well, who am I? And what does it matter? What is my existence really, what does my existence within this body really matter? Uh, well, okay, fine. That 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 could be that could be uh, that could be a nice idea in the sense that it's some humility, but one shouldn't go as far as to become commit suicide, and definitely one shouldn't go as far as to become paralyzed in devotional service. Saying, oh well, who am I? I might as well just I don't know <laughs> go out to the forest and <laughs> lay down or something, <laughs> just live there and spend my life like that until I die. Or whatever the ideas, there's so many ideas. So, okay, fine, we may not be Sanatana Goswami, or we're not Sanatana Goswami, or any Goswami, or whatever we may be, but the idea is that we should have faith that, that Krishna, that the spiritual master, even though we may not be qualified in so many ways, if we follow their instructions, if we try to surrender to their will, they can use us as an instrument in their service for the betterment of humanity or just whatever it may be. Um, so just as Sanatana Goswami was empowered and used as an instrument for Lord Chaitanya's different desires. So we could also be like that. Um, okay, so does anyone have any questions or comments? The usual mental adjustment is not, you know, to commit suicide, but the idea is that <coughs> the process is very strong, but unfortunately my senses are too strong, stronger for it. So I'm going to go out and burn out my senses. I'm going to, you know, I still, I still have to experience a certain amount of sense gratification. And then when that happens, I'll be able to, then I'll be able to come back. And unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. The mind will play a trick like that on you, you know. Rather than try to, try to engage in devotional service as far as possible now and let Krishna uh, do what he says he promises to do, which will take away the material desires if you're sincere in any state. But the mind plays tricks. It's another sense that they're too powerful. Uh, I can't, you know, let me go out and then after that, then I'll be able to come back. It really works. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's just too much. There's just too, mu there's just too much, uh, too much sense gratification. So it's just, you can go for many lives. <laughs> oh, well, okay, well, anyways, it's, it's like a, it's like a never ending, uh, never ending, uh, you know, nightmare or something. It's just too much. So better not do that. If somebody has material desires, okay, fine. That's not, that's not, in this world, in this time, it's not, it's not unnatural. You know, it's quite natural in the sense that it's common. But, um, therefore, in the Bhagavatam it says, akamo sarva kamo va moksha, moksha kamo daradi ti vrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param. So, akama sarva kamo va moksha kamo sa a kama, one who has no material desires. Sarva kama, one who has all material desires. Uh, moksha kama, one who's after liberation. Whoever they are, they should intensely engage in the worship of Krishna. Tivrena bhakti yogena yujete purusham param. Yeah, intelligent udara di. And like Dhruva Maharaj, I mean, he had the he had a he has huge material desires. So vast his material desires. He wanted to have a bigger kingdom than his, you know, father, father, great grandfather, grandfather, right? And um, that 
I mean, with that, you know, that that means he's after position. You know, that means he, you know, he wants to get back at his stepmother. I mean, he wants to be in charge. He's, you know, he didn't just want to become the temple president or for some, you know, so he could be the boss or something, or you want to become the Bakta leader, or the Sankirtan leader, or you know, <laughs> whatever other position people may want in ISKCON. But he wanted to be the top top, you know. So it's a bit, and then he became purified because he engaged in devotional service. One last thing about that before David read this comment or question that uh, there was this boy last night. He's like, I don't know, how old is he, you think? Three years old? That boy at the front? Three? Yeah, three-year-old boy. And his uh, mother's a devotee, and his father's, I guess, becoming a devotee. Um, but the mother was explaining how the boy is very special of course, all mothers think their boys are special, right? Um, but he is special. But um, why he was special? Because she said he was preaching. He, he's a preacher already, and he would and he would be his babysitter. He has a little drum, and then he would tell his babies, you know, he'd go like this, and he'd chant, "Huddy, huddy, huddy," and then and then he would hand the drum to the babysitter, and the babysitter would, you know, go like this with the drum, and then he would like indicate, "Hey, chant," you know, "Huddy, huddy." So then with the father also, the father, um, the boy has, uh, this boy has his father read him the pastime of Dhruva Maharaj. And the mother said like a hundred times in a row. And I was thinking, oh, like Lord Chaitanya, you know, he wanted to hear it so much from Gadadhar Pandit. But anyways, so nice. Just in relation to Dhruva Maharaj, I thought about that. You were talking about... Um, how we shouldn't commit suicide physical, in order to physical or spiritual um, that's kind of where my question is going so we shouldn't commit suicide because it, um, it's disrespectful to our spiritual master and our spiritual authorities because uh, they have plans for the service that they want to see performed through us but I was just thinking how um, if one choose to disrespect their immediate authorities, isn't that another form of spiritual suicide? And if you could speak on how not surrendering to your immediate temple authorities is a form of spiritual suicide. Well, there's a, you know, there's a disease and, you know, certain diseases at, at, at the particular time of the disease, it's not, it's not uh, fatal. You know, it's not just going to kill you immediately. But the nature of disease is that it is that it grows or it spreads. That's why Chanaka Pandit says three things need to be taken care of immediately. Fire. Why? Because it spreads. Debt. Because <laughs> it increases. And also disease. Because the tendency is for it to take over. So, so you, you may say that, oh, well, if I tell my Sangratan leader or whatever, this person or that person, well, no, I don't feel like it. I'm not going to do it find somebody else, you know, or you don't know what you're talking about. I know better than you. <laughs> you should be listening to me or whatever it is. So you could say that not, might not be a fatal, a fatal, you know, knock where the person's just going to, you know, the next morning he's going to be on the road to whatever, Gold Coast of Australia, you know, to be surfing and enjoying his senses. But if that is not checked over time, it may, as the weeds do, uh, any farmer knows, the weeds will choke the creeper, the plant, tender. So that's the idea to try to check it, to control it. Just like senses, I mean, the senses, um, you know, need to be controlled. And it says one who could control them, he could be a guru. Vacha vegam manaso krota vegam jiva vegam adodapasta vegam. So one who could tolerate, and it doesn't say that one whose senses are completely like, you know, they they have no urges, they have no desires, you know, it says one who can tolerate, one who can c control. So similarly, we may have those certain things, uh, whatever it may be, tendencies, which are, you know, like a disease, we may have it, but it is to control it. Like one devotee said about this other person, he said, oh yeah, he Someone said, oh, yeah, where's this person's false ego, you know? And then this other devotee said, oh, he keeps it, 
he keeps it in a cage, you know, locked up in a cage, uh, you know, under control. <laughs> so, um, so that's the idea. But, uh, yeah. And in relation to that, I mean, there's like, there's, you know, pride, which means the inability to want, want advice and be independent, you know, in so many different ways. And et cetera. I mean, it's a big topic. So that's could say something that could that 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 could be a problem. You know, be, could be suicidal if not controlled. And uh, also, you know, personal desires like material desires, like Lord Chaitanya says, nadanam najanam na sundarim. You know, wealth, uh, women followers, whatever, or men followers, whatever. Um, so those personal desires, that could be also suicidal if not controlled. And also the last thing, those are kind of like a lot of the things that I see devotees have issues with, pride, personal desires. And also like this, wa wa it's called wanderlust. Wanderlust is desires to, you know, see the world and everything in the world. It's like, okay, I, I understand people, people like to travel, people like to whatever, this and that. Okay, fine. It's, you know, it's normal in many ways. But... It's wonderlust of like becoming like an independent um, spiritual like sense enjoyer. You know, you just go here, go there, go so many places. But <laughs> what about, I don't know, taking some service, some like heavy duty service for the Sangerton mission? You know, like uh, like this devotee. <laughs> Anyways, whatever. Tirtamaj said that, you know, sometimes people wear, they, they wear that shirt. I lost my heart in Vrindavan, you know. That's that's great, you know. It's a wonderful sentiment. And then Tirtha was saying, "Oh well, maybe you should lose your heart in the pots back there, you know, <laughs> because you know they need to get for the individual he's talking about. Maybe is right. so that's the goal to lose your heart in Vrindavan. But yes, actually, this point about wanderlust is what convinced me to stay in Los Angeles when I first moved down here. Oh yeah, I." Uh, my plan was to leave around Rathiatra and go check out some other temples, but um, I met Parameshwar Prabhu. Oh, I see. And because uh, I had I, cause I had asked I had asked one of the RVC devotees if I could potentially travel with him in the future, and so he told me he told me he's like, Parameshwar told me hey, look, it seems that you have a little bit of wanderlust right now. <laughs> So I think you should just try to stay in one place That's what and serve. Told you? And then he said, "If you really want to feed that wanderlust, then get lost in the holy name." And it was one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever gotten. And I always go back on that whenever my mind's like, "Oh, maybe I should go here. Maybe I should go there." It's just, yeah. I love those types of uh, exchange with devotees. Sometimes it's just very short, simple, to the point. Seems like it's like, "Hey, well, back to Davis. It seems like you have some wanderlust." And uh, I think you should probably stay here, and if you want to satisfy that, you should get lost in the holy name. It's a really nice, you know, so. All right. Does anyone have any last? Yes. Um, you were uh, mentioning how suicide is heavily influenced by the mode of ignorance. So, uh, can it also be influenced by the mode of passion? Um, generally, as far as the mode of passion goes, uh, no, because mode of passion means you're fired up to like enjoy this world in so many ways. You're like really enthusiastic about it. You know, make a lot of you know. People in the mode of passion, they like themselves too much to commit suicide, in the sense that, like I remember, there's this boy who was coming around and you know kind of strong whatever handsome you know whatever young and you know he had some thoughts of suicide and this and that and and I told devotees he's not going to commit suicide he likes himself too much <laughs> you know so of course to like you know in many ways I mean, it's natural right like yourself I mean it's good right make friends with your mind and all that but but people people who are like really in the lower modes of like ignorance it's like 
they, they, they can't really get themselves in the mode of passion to try to, they don't see anything in this world, it's just like terrible, it's just like nothing for them really, because they're just so in the mode of ignorance. Um, so yeah, people in the mode of passion usually don't do that, it has to, a lot of mode of ignorance has to be there. Of course they're mixed, it's not that it's just like, you know, pure ignorance or passion, it's a mix up, but you could say more leaning towards ignorance. Um, so, so that's why people have to be careful, you know. It's like, ignorance is really dangerous. Is that, you know, psych psych psychology is, is complex. And what happens oftentimes is someone is really in the mode of passion, which is natural in this society, because it's all geared to that, to try to sense gratification. But they're frustrated again and again. You know, she leaves him, or he, she, he leaves her, or whatever. And so uh, that leads, if, if you're stro trying to enjoy a lot and, and you're frustrated, then that leads to the mode of ignorance. Yeah. It, it just, you know, anger, and when the anger is not to be able to express, then inside becomes depressed, you know, and what's the use? And so it, it, it's not uh, so cut and dried, you know, if, it, if a strong passion in nature can easily, can easily lead downward to the mode of ignorance. Especially if you try to mitigate it with drugs and all these different things. It's right in the in the Gita, you know. The result of the mode of, of ignorance is uh, is intoxication, you know, and sleeping too much and you know, get down. So that's 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 the result. But the, but but you get into that mode by too strongly trying to enjoy extremely, which is a mode of passion. So they work together. You know, they're not pure. You know, the mode of passion, and then the percentage of ignorance becomes too high, and you become more prone to. Uh, desperation, so, so, you know. You, you have the standards like this, you know, high material enjoyment, and then, you know, you try, you try, you try, and you're just not, you're not cutting the mark, then... And Prabhupada said on the tape, because he had experience in, in his own life, um, uh, a gentleman, some gentleman in um, Calcutta was very wealthy, and uh, during the war, a lot of, some people get very rich, and a lot of people get very poor. So this guy lost all his money. And he just couldn't live. You know, suddenly his whole the lifestyle he was used to was, was taken away from him, you know, and it's just too much for him. Whereas someone who's born and raised and kind of, you know, used to it, they, okay, I, this, is, this is, you know, they, they've, they've made their peace with it, so to speak, you know, with, with poverty. So that's, a, that's a, another way in which the mode of passion and enjoyment due to circumstances can lead to, to, to depression, and mode of ignorance, and suicide. So it's a complicated affair. But uh, Krishna consciousness, I, I remember my friend, uh, one of my friends who joined, he used to be depressed, and then he was riding on the subway. This is New York, just riding on the subway can get you depressed. And he was, <laughs> and he was chanting, by that time he was chanting, you know. And, he's, and then by the time he got to the temple, he said, hey, what happened to my depression? Just from chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. We should advertise it that way. There's a real epidemic yeah, should, of huh? depression. You yeah. feeling depressed, then come chant Hare Krishna. Yeah, come to the lounge. <laughs> Oh, you might have to stop because of the... That's actually the principal reason a lot of times people take a book. As you say, the books help you get free from stress and anxiety. Mm. A number of occasions, mm. practically every day. Maybe we simply, should add depression to it. Simply too. because I say a certain book is related to stress and anxiety, they'll take that book. Mm. Even if I'm just presenting like some random book and I, like I give them Krishna book, helps you get free from stress and anxiety, and then I explain the rest of the books. I think I'm going to take this one. Okay, good. We make a new sign, free antidepressants. Yeah. All right, good try, Shimon Bhagavatam Kija.